father was in a band when he was younger. He played trumpet. He told me repeatedly, no future in music. Stay away from it. After Boston became a huge hit, I started a company building devices for musicians. Novel, new devices. And I remember him on the phone with me saying, what are you doing wasting your time on this engineering stuff? You should be making a new record. Eventually, I've had some success with my new electronic equipment company. Then he didn't know what to tell me. I knew I'd get mixed up sooner or later. All right. put my own studio together. I wanted to have a place that I might be able to go and get my ideas down on tape. Once I started, I discovered that I had to build devices to create certain sounds that I was looking for. My favorite device is the hyperspace pedal, as I call it. There's only two in existence. I built them a long, long time ago. And as I became more adept at using them, I was able to create all the out-of-this-world sounds that people are used to hearing on Boston albums but haven't heard before, most likely. And let's you sustain a chord indefinitely and do that. And stop it whenever you want to. It's pretty handy. A little gadget. The benefit of being an engineer and a musician is that you eliminate all the communication between the two. Of course, how do you tell an engineer that you want to be able to do this? I mean, it, it's not something that, it's, it's not something you can really put into words. The devices that I built were just designed to produce sounds that I liked. You know, I wasn't sure how other people would view it or how sold they would be on it. So I've been amazed when very well-known guitar players call me and send me messages and make comments and interviews about things that I built. Definitely the biggest thrill was when I got two warranty cards from Jeff Beck for a Rockman headphone amp. That was definitely the highlight of my engineering career. Recording in a studio can be stressful, it can just be sheer drudgery sometimes. I have the idea running through my head and I think I know how a song is going to go, but I can't listen to it. I can't listen to it until I actually play a dozen different parts, each with their own sounds, each with their own character and emotion. And I have to actually physically make it happen. I have to engineer that. I have to get the equipment prepared and produce it. When I have all of that done, then I get to listen to it. And that's the reward.
when I'm designing something. I have an idea in my mind of what it might look like, how it might work, how you might feel using it. When I was recording the first Boston album, I thought I was out of my mind for wanting to use my home engineered contraptions on a professional recording. When I put my foot down and said, this is the way it has to be done, that wasn't because I was confident. I was just gonna do what I thought sounded good. And this was the only way I would wanna record the music. I always felt insecure about my playing, my music. I was always thinking, you know, I don't think my music is good enough. I don't think it's as good as everything else on the radio. Definitely, definitely on rock stars. I treat the music world and the whole rock star thing as sort of a fantasy world. I get to step into from time to time and I step back out. I like people to relate to me as just another person that they know, not as the guy who did more than a feeling. It's nice to be appreciated, not so nice to be appreciated for something other than who you are. More than a feeling. Oh. I do remember that song. Let's have dinner. Let's have dinner. <laughs> <laughs>